This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. All right, thank you, Charles. And good evening, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Uh, this is our, I've lost count if this is our third or fourth of these we've done virtually now. And uh, each time we have a little bit of a learning curve uh, trying to get it right. So thank you for your uh, patience with that. We've got um, two applications tonight on our agenda. So the way the evening will flow, we will have our public hearing where we'll read each of the applications into the record and then we'll hear testimony from the applicants. Uh, we just asked a couple things from a housekeeping perspective when you're ready to speak. If you would um, help our um, minutes and uh, note keeper by giving your name and address for the record. Uh, we will try to do our best to monitor uh, hand raising for those of you who like to do that on the um, in the chat portion. If you have something to add, uh, and, and we will go through, the applicants will have a chance to speak. We'll also ask for each of the applications if there's anybody on who wishes to speak either in favor or against the application. But if we get toward the end of the hearing portion and you have something to add and you have not been able to, please uh, feel free to, to speak up. Um, otherwise, while you're not speaking, I'll just ask um, if you'll keep your line muted. It helps a little bit with the background noise and clarity for those who are speaking. And once we've concluded the public hearing, we'll uh, make a mo motion and vote to close the public hearing and that moves us into the public meeting. And the distinction there is once we've moved past the public hearing, we don't take any additional testimony that moves into the public meeting where just the commissioners are discussing and then we bring each um, application to a vote. Um, when we read each application in, the first thing we will do is uh, hear the staff report from the zoning enforcement officer, and then we will move to the applicant themselves. So um, with that, unless, uh, Charles, I missed anything obvious there, we will uh, move ahead. Do we uh, have a commissioner who wants to volunteer to uh, be clerk and read the applications in this evening? And if not, no worries, I'm happy to do it, but. All right, I, I'll, uh, I'll take that as a sign that I should just go ahead and uh, move forward. So we'll move into our public hearing. First application is number 6234-20, variance from section 3.5.4 livestock to allow chicken coop to be set back four feet from rear property boundary as against 50 feet required residential zone A. Location 34 Mayfield Road, applicant Jacqueline Castillo. And so we'll start with the staff report. Charles, if you would kick us off there. Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, some background information regarding the variance for um, number uh, 34 Mayfield Road. Application was submitted to the uh, building to, to the um, department on uh, April 28th, 2020, requesting a zoning permit for the raising of chickens at the above stated address, that's 34 Mayfield Road. Application was processed and it was found that the property is 12,196.8 square feet, thus making the requirements, uh, thus, thus meeting the requirements in terms of lot area for the raising of chickens. Other criteria for this activity include having a front yard setback of 100 feet and um, rear yard setback of 50 feet and uh, both side yards uh, of 25 feet uh, for, the, for the coop. Among uh, other requirements are the need to keep the manure in a closed chamber, in a closed uh, watertight uh, chamber as approved by the health department. So as I said, staff has reviewed the, applica the application and uh, had to deny the request for the zoning permit because on, on the plot plan that was submitted to us, um, although the application did meet the, the front and um, side setbacks, uh, the length of the property did not permit the um, both 100 feet from the front and 50 feet 
from from the from the rear yard. So uh, the applicant had, presently the coop is, is in the rear yard. The, the applicant has constructed the, the coop and um, has observed the side yard setback. It's actually and I will check my plot plan momentarily. It's actually more than a hundred feet from the from the front and um, from the side yards, it's um, more than the 25 feet. And uh, I don't know if the coop was constructed uh, before the application was made or that the applicant foresee a positive result from the application because she had the required lot area, more than the required lot area, so to speak, for raising chickens. So uh, this prompted a complaint from the neighbor at number 40 uh, Mayfield Road, which is exactly uh, adjacent to, um, to the subject property. And um, owners of number 40 Mayfield Road objected to the presence of the coop. And um, I went and inspected and saw that the coop was in place. Um, so the applicant uh, advised me that uh, she would seek a variance to have the coop main in the present location. Uh, so I did not um, serve a cease and desist order uh, because of the fact that she was going to come into the zone of Board of Appeals. And um, I also see where the, the neighbor has referred to the coop as a chicken farm. However, uh, based on the definition of farm in section two of the zoning regulations, I would not categorize the activity as a farm, but as an accessory um, to the residential use of the property. And um, I just like to point out at this time that roosters are not expressly permitted by the regulations. So the, the applicant could have um, no more than five hens. Um, my inspections uh, revealed five hens. Uh, it's a uh, Two compartment um, coop, one section with the hens that you could see them, and um, there's a night section where they keep the the hens during the, during the night. That's it, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Miss um, Castillo. Looks like you're here. If you would just give us uh, your name and address for the record, and then. Um... Tell us what you'd like us to know about the application. So, like Mr. Charles said, um, the coop. And I'm sorry, could I just need you to give your name uh, and address? Jacqueline Castillo, 34 Mayfield Road, Weathersfield, Connecticut. Thank and, you. Go ahead. Okay. So I have a coop for when the 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 hands goes in to go to sleep, and it's locked and secure. So the other open area is called the runner. So they spend half a day at the runner, and then once dawn started going down, they automatically go inside their coop. My yard is fenced in, so they they cannot they cannot get out from from my property. Another thing is, um, I have their record of their vaccinations when they were babies. Can you, can you see that? Oh, I can read it. Is, is the Pelorum Sanfoid. The other one is the avian influenza. And the other one is Salmonella. So they, they got treated for all that before they came in here. Um, another thing that I did, because I try to do everything by the book was um, I registered the hands with the Department of Agriculture Bureau at 400 Columbus Boulevard. So they're registered also. So fascination. Um, I commit myself to clean the coop at least three times a week. I have five grandchildren and one is artistic. So that's very therapeutical for them when they come in and because all the chaos that's going on with the COVID. And to prevent bacterial and diseases. 
um, I've been a loyal taxpayer for at least 20 years. I've been in the same house for 20 years. All my kids grew up here and never had a problem. So my neighbor made an assumption the first time she called and she complained about a loud noise which she couldn't identify the animals because the runner was there first and it was covered. And there were baby chicks. They were not loud noises. There's no way from where, where the coop is for her to hear baby chicks at nighttime. So um, I'm going by my list, okay guys? I'm sorry. No, that's fine. We wanna make sure you get a chance to let us know everything you wanna let us know. Okay. Okay, all my neighbors approved the coop, even the locations, the guys in the back, because I'm closer to, to the rear um, line, they, they're okay with it. And, and they said that if they don't come to this meeting, um, it means that they're okay, because I asked them for a letter. He goes, no, I'm not going to give a letter. If I don't go into the meeting, that means I don't have a problem with you. So basically all the neighbors that I've talked to are okay with the coop, except for one. So after installing my fence, it became a personal issue because she thought she had more land. So when um, the guy came to measure and label my land, one of the persons, the husband or one of the males that lived there came and, and called the guy an a-hole when he said, because they asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm labeling because they're gonna put um, fence up. So he called them the word and, and that was it. Once the fence started coming up, she started calling the police. Police never spoke to us because there was no issue. My, my land was labeled professionally and I paid somebody to do that. And I have copies of the documentation if you guys need me to send. Um, so it, it's been, it's been a harassment since I put the fence, she calls cops and she calls the town at least 10, 50 times a week. I think so. But, um, and if this continue, I'm going to have to probably make a harassment report because it's a personal level now. Another thing that she mentioned was that, um, the chickens have COVID and they can affect their kids. But I, I looked into it and scientific fact that COVID cannot be transferred between chickens and humans. And that's online. And that's it. If you guys have any other questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I'll start. I've got just a, a couple. So when you were talking about the runner, we have a diagram in with the materials we had. The runner is the smaller of yes. the two structures. That's so eight, looks like eight by five. And then the coop itself is enclosed. That's the bigger piece of the structure. Okay. And they're um, attached. They're attached. Okay. Um, what's the fence like at the back of the property? Is that chain link? Is it privacy fence? Privacy fence, wood fence, um, what is it, height? Uh, five by eight. Six by eight. Six six. By eight. Okay. So it's all wood and there's no, it was professionally um, installed. Hello? Okay. Uh, looks like Charles is gonna share the diagram I was referencing. Um, it, one of the uh, things I know you mentioned in the application is just the length of your lot that makes it challenging to do the 100 feet in the front and then the 50 in the back. Um, one of the other parts of the, the zoning regulations references at least 25 feet on all boundaries. Um, was there a, is there a specific reason why it needed to be that close to the back property line versus I know, you know realistically it seems like you would have had a challenge getting 50. Is there a reason why you it needs to be four feet as opposed to 20 or 25? Because um, after my porch, there's a hill going down. Okay. So it couldn't be balanced. And, I, and like I said, I, if you see the pictures, there's two houses in the back. 
they gave me permission. And I, I know I have to go through you too, but they, they didn't have a problem with the cool being there. Okay. From, um, Casey's Lane, property owner. And you were, um, you were referencing the fence construction. When, when was that fence put up on the side yard that you were referencing? About two months ago, three. Okay. And the fuck I put it on the fence, huh? Between, closer to between three and four months ago. Okay. All right. Do any of the other commissioners have questions? Nope. Okay, then. Uh, I, do. I do. Oh, go ahead, Dan. Sorry. Uh, can you please explain how. Um, oh, I lost my question here. Uh, how you, the, um, the chicken manure is kept and where it's kept on the property when you clean uh, it three times a week? The chickens? The, no, the, um, you clean the um, chicken coops three times a week. Where do you um, put that manure? Okay, so the inside, we put the, the shavers. Those are cleaned three times a week. The, the outside runner, we buy bags of sands and we replace the top coat and add an extra bag of sand because the sand, um, it, everything is scoopable. So we scoop everything from the top and add a fresh one for, for there won't be no batter water. It's like where, cat litter, but it's sand. And where do you put that waste? That waste goes in the bag and my husband has a dumpster at his business. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Actually, I have one more question. It says here that it should be covered in a watertight pit or chambered as approved by the, um, by the health department. The, the top of the runner is covered. No, all manure shall be kept in a covered watertight pit or chamber as approved by the health department. I, I'm not understanding. What am I supposed to do? Um, replace it to something else? That's the well, outside. It seems like you're storing it until your husband can take it to his dumpster at work in a plastic bag. Is that correct? Yeah, every day. But per the requirements that it should be kept in a covered wire tight pit or chamber. And that's approved by the health department. Okay, we can do that. The, the blue bin that you have, it, it should go in the blue bin and then in the car. Yeah. We have a, 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 a big plastic blue bin in the garage. Okay. As long as it's approved by the health department. Okay, so I need to show the, do you want to see the blue bin? Uh, I'll have to defer that to Charles. I don't know what the okay. procedure is. For what that. was the question, Ms. Castillo? Um, if, My you volume is, is, if you wanted right. to see the blue bin in the garage, but he said you can come and, and check it. Okay, so if, this variance was granted today, um, then I would issue the permit with that condition. What I would do is call the health department and they would come out to make sure that you have that um, disposal facility in place. Otherwise the permit would not be granted. And Charles, a question for you. The the structure itself um, with the health department piece notwithstanding the the structure has no issue it's simply the the placement on the property that is the yes, i i would yeah the structure is is pretty much um intact it's, it's a nice looking structure it seems to be um safe to contain chickens inside and everything like that. Um, the only is issue right here is the, um, the distance from the rear property line. Okay, and with the, uh, and we're correct on this, right? The, the length of the lot precludes the full 50 feet. 
Yes, the length okay. of the lot on one side is 123.46 feet. And on the other side, adjacent to um, number 40, it's 126.19. Now, from the front property line to the, to the um, front section of the coop is 109.5 feet. And then the, the, the width of the coop is 9 feet 6 inches and then 4 feet from the rear of the coop to the rear property line. And Ms. Castillo, just to go back to what you said before, the your yard between where the coop is now and the back of the house, you said that is not level for you to be able to... No, you, if we move it front, it, it's, it's a little bit downhill. Okay. All right, any other commissioner questions for the applicant? I do. Rita, go ahead. Um, the height of the coop itself, that's over the fence. Would your neighbor have fewer objections if it was not as high a structure? No, he said it's fine. The, has, the neighbor, neighbor that's complaining, the, the woman that is complaining, not, not your backyard neighbor. She's not complaining about the, the, the height, is what you're saying, of the coop? Right. That, that because it's point. visible. You, I know you put up the fence, but the height is above the fence. So. Um, the everybody around here has a higher height. The backyard neighbor has a storage higher height also. Okay. Right. And um, is there any noise associated with that, like electrical noise? What? No electrical. There's nothing. It's just the chickens themselves. It's the just, hens themselves. It's, it's just the hens. And I took a video. If mm -hmm. you guys want to hear to see if they make noise. Um, give me one second. I wasn't sure if there was some kind of a blower or some kind of equipment. No, okay. just when we cut the, the, the lawn, that's the only equipment that you can hear. Okay. But there's no blower or anything loud. Where's that video? When you're looking for something, you can't find it. Yeah, that's always the way that works. We have so many pictures, and I'm sure I took this video. Well, you're looking well, if you for can't, that. Is that um, oh. Basically, a coop wouldn't be allowed then unless you had a, a lot that was longer than 150 feet. Is that correct, Charles? Um, basically, Yes, Commissioner, because um, um, you would have to facilitate that 100 foot setback from the front and that 50 foot setback from the rear yard. So, in effect, you would have to have a lot with a length of 150 plus whatever the coop. Yeah. Let's say 158 or whatever the coop it is going to be. So, um, yes. So, I mean, I. That, that so, were the zoning regulations made to try to uh, avoid having any kind of livestock then on a residential lot? No, because the 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 the, the um the foremost requirement for the for the um chickens for the rearing of chickens is the lot size, which is eight thousand square feet. Right. And then, of course, the setback comes in place. Um, mm -hmm. There are properties that have that are lengthy and um, they have come in for permits and they're issued the permit because they have the length and they can facilitate that um, 100 foot front, 50 foot rear setback. But um, in, in a few cases, you're going to find that um, applicants for coops may not have that because of the, you know, the way each lot is configured differently. You is know, um, is the hundred and the fifty? Is that a is that more of like a health hazard type of distance, um, or yeah. what, I mean, what's what's the reasoning behind those? Yeah, I I'm not prepared to um, say what the reasoning was at the time when the regulations were um, were made, but um, suffice it to say that um, every property and every zone have various 
um, types of requirements for um, for setbacks. Um, ordinarily, a, if this was a, just a typical shed, uh, uh, um, it would only require like a five feet setback from the property line. And um, so, yeah, I, I can't really justify that at this moment, so to speak. So. All right. Do we have any other commissioner questions for the applicant? Come on. Okay. Um, Charles, do you have anything that you've received uh, in terms of feedback that we need to enter into the record around this application? Okay. okay. I have not received any positive um, comments uh, in favor of the, of the application. And that's not to say that there aren't any. Right. Um, but um, suffice it to say that I received an, an email from um, Natalia Crazyman and her husband Yevini Crazyman of one of Forty Mayfield Road, and um, they are in strong opposition to this um, this coup. Um, and I, I'll read the, the uh, email. It says, hello. These comments are from Yevini Crazyman and Natalia Crazyman living at 40 Mayfield Road, Weathersfield CT 06109. We are direct neighbors of the house in application 6234-20. Attached are our comments with our position that we strongly disagree with allowing a chicken farm neither 50 nor four feet away from any property line and describing major issues with this zoning violation. Please review our comments that are attached to this case. Also, my wife, Natalia Crazyman, would like to speak up over this application. She can be reached at her cell phone at 860-392-9897. And um, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I will call the, uh, the, the neighbor. Okay, while, while you do that, uh, I'm just gonna ask, I know we have a couple of uh, other attendees on the line. Is there anybody on who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Okay, no response and looks like so. Um, I hello, hello. Oh, hello. Hi, can you give us uh, your name and address for the record? Who is Mark? Mark, I think you're, you're talking, Mark. We can't hear you. Who is Mark? Is Mark one of the neighbor? Mm -mm. Oh, we can't hear him. Now, I believe M Mark is for the second application. Hold on. I... Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. There's two Marks. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, they live right across from me, and the only concern I had was the breath that they're cleaning it up. I, the only thing I would be concerned about would be a fly issue, a fly for the thing. It seems like they're cleaning it up, and uh, as long as they clean it up, it's fine with me. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm for it. And, and sorry, sir, could you just give us your name and address for the record? Sure. It's Mark Marco, 33 Mayfield Road. Gotcha. Okay. And you're right across, the right across the street? I across the street. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who's on who wishes to speak in favor of the application? All right, looks like we have uh, somebody at an extension ending in 1717 that was trying to speak, but we couldn't hear anything. Did? Excuse this me, is, Mr. Chair. This is Patty okay. Maritko. I'm also at 33 oh, Mayfield Oh, gotcha. Road. Okay. I was just so, trying to get his attention. But gotcha. We don't, hear the, we don't hear the chickens at all. I mean, we're across the street, but I see no issues, really. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right, so Charles. Do you, <laughs> great, all right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, Charles, do you have the the other?
comment ready to go? All right, do we have anybody else who's on the line with us who wishes to speak in opposition to the application? All right, and uh, Ms. Castillo, while we wait for uh, Hello, Charles there. Um, good afternoon, my name is Charles uh, from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Am I speaking? Hi, how are you? Am I speaking with Natalia Grazerman? My understanding is that you would like to speak up over this application that we have before the Board of Appeals this evening. And um, I, I must um, also note that you did send me an attachment with your concerns. It's a five page document. Um, do you have that with you and would you want to, and you will read it to the commission? Yes, yes, but I'm, I'm not, okay, so you will read it to the commission. Okay. No, well, no, 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 we are not, we have all the time in the world. I mean, it's up to you what you want to do, all right? But what I will do now is put you on speakerphone and then you will talk you will address the, the commission. And um, first, I'd like you to state your name and address for the record. But just hold on one minute, let me get you um, into the audio. Okay, Ms. Crazyman, you, you may now go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Well, first of all, I wanted to thank you for um, doing this meeting. This is very important to all of us because we live in a very close neighborhood. And um, I think everybody will agree to uh, one um, thing that is in common here, that we all want the safety and the health of all our neighbors. So, and, um, so I wanted to thank you for doing this meeting and for um, thank you for giving me a chance to speak up because I believe this is a very important issue right now. And um, <clears throat> so um, uh, we've been living here for uh, about eight years now. And uh, we've been living like, uh, it was absolutely no issues like uh, up to until recently. So, and um, I like my neighborhood. I like where we live and with all uh, respect to everyone. So we, uh, we have to absolutely disagree with the recent request of our neighbors to minimize the territorial limits to their uh, like livestock on their backyard. So, and there are multiple reasons for um, our opinion, but um, I just want to concentrate only on the major problem here. So, um, I am a certified medical provider, and I feel we need to address this problem here, but more even than that, I am obligated by my, by my professional oath to the citizens to prevent the medical illnesses if it's possible. So the main concern is the uh, environmental pollution and the infection control violation that will spread zoonotic viruses across our neighborhood, especially during this pandemic crisis. So uh, the governmental organization named CDC, uh, which is a center of disease control, uh, uh, warns us about that spread of the infection. Um, I want to read a very quick note, uh, quote from their website. And they say that zoonotic diseases, and those are the diseases that are spread by animals. Most likely, um, they're known spread by chicken. So they're caused by harmful germs like viruses, bacteria, parasites, and fungi. And these germs can cause many different types of illnesses in people and animals. They can range from mild to serious infection and even death. Animals can sometimes appear healthy even when they are carrying the germs and they can make people sick. So another quote from CDC program, um, and this is a governmental organization, uh, that they work 24-7 to protect people from zoonotic diseases in the United States and around the world. The territorial regulations are made for the safety purposes to protect all the residents and the visitors. So besides the direct contact, there are also indirect contact and the vector 
foodborne, foodborne and waterborne types of the infections. So uh, even the caged animals cause a, tr a, a tremendous risk for the infection spread. And I want to put this in our example here now. So that was the direct CDC uh, recommendation. And now I want to say in our neighborhood, we live in a very highly windy area here. And the spread of infection here is most likely through the air. So which is the vector point? And um, also, so the most, um, well, uh, the infection that the chicken can cause is influenza A viruses. And they're found in many other animals, but the chicken are the most likely that they spread this infection. So some people are more likely than the others to get very sick and they can even die. So the high uh, risk group of people include young children, adults, adults older than 65, people with a weakened uh, immune system and pregnant people, uh, pregnant women. So we have all of these category people living in this neighborhood. I believe that almost every single house on our street has children and they're younger age. We have, I have myself, three young children. And um, in, even my family, we have people with very weak immune system. So this is a tremendous threat to their health. Then um, that was the first pro problem. The second reason for that is a pollution control. And that is marked uh, by increased risk of the environmental allergens in the air. The CDC organization says that these allergens can cause asthma, which we have also like in the neighborhood, the pulmonary diseases such as bronchitis, COPD, allergies, and they can debilitate the health. And animals' hair, dust, manure, and invisible to naked eye, livestock infections are transmitted by air. It carried out by wind, in all directions and accumulates in the ground. So this can be highly resistant to all temperature extremes and it drastically increases the risk of infection spread and even a small amount of virus can cause lethal consequences. We have many children and elderly people here and uh, they either he live here or they can visit us. People with ongoing chronic medical conditions and um, are being contraindicated by their medical providers to have any kind of exposure to these environmental risks and including animal infection. So, and that was the second reason. But more than that, the most dangerous of the health con condition exacerbation is during the fall or the spring months, which will multiply today's problem even to the exponential factor. And I believe like a future, like in a couple months, the fall is coming. The third uh, reason I would like to say is uh, that we all suffered from the ongoing deadly pandemic to some extent. Some of us have lost our friends or loved ones. COVID-19 started from zoonotic virus as well. It was on another side of our planet, but in a matter of weeks, it spread all over the world. So anyone with ongoing chronic disease or just mild illnesses are at enormous risk of getting coronavirus or deteriorate acutely, requiring intubation and potentially inability to recover. And another problem, uh, I mean, like another reason for my statement is that uh, it is um, there is improper care for the animals. That includes usually the, all the animals, they need unnecessary vaccinations. They need cleaning regulations and territorial measures, which is not provided in this case. The mandated minimal uh, limits for the property livestock animals are made for the reason. That's why it was originally mandated. The animals manure hair, dust, other invisible deadly viruses, bacteria, parasites, and fungus, they are uh, produced and cured by 
chicken a very valid reason to keep them at a very safe distance with the necessary provided vaccinations and cleaning regulations. Also, I guess a couple more points I wanted to point out um, is that the beginning of July this year, just like recently, we witnessed a spiked number of COVID cases in our country. And um, in some hospitals, it doubled the number of the initial coronavirus infection during the early spring, which is another reason to try to keep our environment clean. This is a real threat to our society. The uh, property measures are not limited only to the ground level. The air transmission of the infection is a tangential threat to everyone in our neighborhood. And I also believe that we have, a, we have to realize that our own health can be affected as well. Think about the factual danger to our families and children and parents and loved ones. This is real and this is deadly. And this is our present that needs to, our critical rational thinking right now in order for us to see a future. And also I wanted to note that um, the required recommendations are mandated before the pandemic started, which means that it is very likely that the regulations will change very soon. And it will probably uh, suggest the increase in the current minimal limit to the bigger distance and more strict rules. We believe that um, the official governmental organization, such as CDC or World of Health Organization, um, WHO, will have a more weighted opinion on this issue. However, we're convinced that we can handle this situation on a local level before uh, between ourselves in a very civil matter without involving um, the, uh, the higher authorities. And uh, to shorten the distance, which was established for the infection prevention from 50 feet to four feet is absolutely unforgivable. This is, uh, it's gonna be a huge mistake that can cause someone's disease exacerbation, health deterioration, or even a consequent life. So, and last thing, what I wanted to say is that this problem has been active since May of 2020. In regards of placing restrictions by the town hall, the appeal neighbors ignored all the official officers warning in the period of three months, which happened twice. And they still illegally continue their livestock every single day on their backyard, including the time during the appealing process. Even today, I witnessed they still have continued doing this and um, they're not even like worried about the whole process, how it's gonna be or if it's gonna affect anybody. So the question is not even the territory and it's not even a number of animals. They're occasionally outside of the cage, on the grass, everywhere, on the entire backyard. So there is absolutely zero feet distance from all directions. It doesn't matter if it's from the backyard, or from the back wall, from the side walls, it's absolutely zero distance everywhere. And I have picture documentations of that. And even today, they were continually doing the same thing. And for someone who violated the town hall regulations twice on the same problem during the last three months, they ignored and will con and they are continuously ignoring all the rules. I'm afraid that even today's decision, regardless, it will not even matter to them. And they will continue doing the same, growing chicken um, on the backyard anyways. So I was thinking like, my questions are, one is uh, what can be done to protect our safely? Can be there any kind of either fine penalty or any other way to obligate them to obey the law? That was number one. And number two question is uh, when this is gonna be effective date 
um, if their appeal is denied. I understand if um, it will be granted and they will get the uh, approval. So, and uh, the spread of infection will still continue, I understand, in this case. But if it's going to be denied, when it's going to be effective, and how can we do this to make that really effective? All right, Charles, do you wish, do you wish to address either of those questions? Okay, Mr. Chairman. So, um, if, like I said before, if this uh, variance is not granted, then um, my duty would be to issue a cease and desist order. That cease and desist order would give the applicant uh, 10 days to cease and desist the rearing of chickens. And yeah. um, they would have to um, remove uh, the chickens. Also, yeah. also, they would have to remove <coughs> the coop. They would have to, to get, um, if they want to keep the coop, because I'm thinking that they may figure, okay, we could get rid of the chickens, but um, the coop could be used for some kind of a storage. Uh, that has to be set about five feet from the property line and there should also be an application for a zoning permit from that. So there are two different things here. The, okay. where, whereas the chicken requires 50 feet, um, chicken coop requires 50 feet, just a normal shed for, for storage would have to be a minimum of five feet from the property line. Okay. But if that will be continuing an issue, like they did not listen to the regulations and they violated it several, like twice. Yeah, I, and it's I feel like continuously going on and going on. Me? My kids and my family is afraid to be outside because we have allergies. I, and it was, yeah, I, I, I feel like we're venturing. Infection spread and everything. And I can't even imagine what's going to happen in the fall. This yeah, is I, my biggest concern. Charles, I, I would like to just, if we could, just bring us back to the application. I other neighbors because we have elderly people here as well. And um, so I don't want them to get sick. Um, my, my input here, Mr. Chairman, is that um, the, the speaker is not only opposed to um, the chicken coop being four feet from the property line. She is opposed to the chicken coop um, period. That, that means, and I'm interpreting her statement to say that if there was a, it was f even 50 feet from the property line, she would still be in a position. I must say that I've granted other, um, other permits for chickens and I have not had one single complaint of chickens yeah. um, for those that have been granted the, the permits. The only complaints that I would have received is from people who say, hey, they have chickens and I don't know that they have a permit or they have roosters that are waking me up at three o'clock in the morning. And yes. um, uh, the, the regulations do not expressly permit uh, roosters in the town. So okay. if you have chickens any at all, it has to be just five hens and no more, no roosters. <laughs> Okay, I'd, I'd like to, um, I think this would be a good opportunity to give Ms. Ms. Castillo an opportunity to respond if, uh, if you would like to do so. Yes, so again, she mentioned that the chickens were not terminated. There's no communication here, she doesn't know. And I already proved that they are vaccinated. And I started the process of the permit, um, zoning permit in June. And I didn't have the chickens when I started the process of, of the permit. And another thing I wanna also bring up, there's many farms, chicken farms in Wethersfield, and I've never heard of people getting sick. Due to, everybody eats eggs and they don't get sick. The chickens, the hygiene is there. We're always constantly cleaning. That one thing I need to get is, is, is the, the tank to carry the waste. But everything, um, when Mr. Charles Morrison came in, I asked him, 
you take off your mask because it smells in here. And he was okay with it. It, it didn't smell, it was clean. And I have grandkids too. I got five grandkids. I don't want my grandkids to get sick, but, but it, like I said, it's something <laughs> therapeutical for them to, to play with the animals because of my autistic son and all the other kids. They're locked down, even for myself, for all of us. And it's just going to be for eggs, for organic eggs for the family. And can I ask specifically about a reference that was made to the uh, chickens being outside of the, the coop and the runner? Um, they ran away when my grandkids opened it, and we immediately put them back in. Okay. No, there was no chicken out here today because we were sitting back here and the grandkids was inside the house. They didn't open the door today. Okay, thank you. Um, Charles, do you want to ask the caller on the phone if there's any additional comment? Uh, Ms. Crazyman, uh, yes. do you have any additional comments at this time? It was uh, hard to hear the speaker, but what I understood that she said the chicken ran away uh, once and it was difficult to get them back inside. Is that correct? Is that what you said, Ms. Castillo? You said that the, the door for the coop was open. I said my grandkids opened the door. Once one go in, they all follow. It wasn't difficult. They're like trains. If one goes to bed, they all go to bed together. They're always around the same area. So it's not difficult to put them in. So, so you're saying that for some reason, your grandson opened the coop and they all um, filed out of the coop and you you quickly got them back inside of the coop? Yes, I immediately- That is not correct. Put them back in. They, that is uh, not correct because it was multiple times. It's not only once. And they have been outside all day. And um, I have seen that uh, you and um, some other family members were sitting outside, not doing anything, trying to get them back inside. I'll be so more a... care of the grandkids and make sure that they're not going to be able. I'm going to put the lock higher, and that way they won't come out of the runner. I'll resolve, resolve that by putting the lock. It's a little lower. We'll put it up on the top, and they're not going to be able to open the door with the runners. What was the reason why you haven't done this before? Well, I... So we'll, we'll allow you to address that one. Is there a reason why that hasn't been done before? Right. It has, you of, yeah. have three months to fix this issue. And in three months, you have not been able to fix this. Yeah. Let's give an opportunity for response here. So, Ms. Ms. Casillo, is there a, it, has this been something you've thought about before in terms of raising the lock? No, I just I I just thought about it today because she she complained and brought up a point. Okay. So if if that's an issue, we're gonna fix it. Okay. Do we have out, any? I sent out twenty seven letters, and she's the only one complaining. I believe this okay. is been uh, this problem has been going on for too long now. And there was plenty of opportunities to fix that. And I believe that if, ha if it hasn't been fixed in the past, it will repeatedly happen every single day. All right. Uh, so we thank you for your input. Um, are there any other additional questions from commissioners? No. OK. Um, Ms. Castillo, anything you want to add before we close out the hearing? I already said that. Um, can you tell me the, the name of the waste that I need to get just to make sure I'm getting the correct one and there's no mistake on that? 
Uh, I don't know that I'll have to defer to the town on that. That's going to require a uh, health department. So um, we, I don't believe we have that information readily available for tonight, but we can make sure you get it. Okay. And how long is going to be the decision made? Because the application took a little longer and I started it. Um, but due to the COVID and people not being in the office working from home, the process took longer. Yeah, we, uh, we have one more application that we need to hear testimony on and then we move into our meeting. We'll be voting on them both tonight. So oh, and we'll get a letter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So did we miss anybody who wanted to speak on this application who has not had a chance to speak? Going once, going twice, and I don't see any hands raised on Zoom. Okay. With that, we're going to move to our second application, which is application number 6235-20, variance from section 3.7, dimensional requirements to allow rear yard setback of 32.7 feet as against 40 feet minimum required to facilitate the extension of existing deck as shown on plot plan residential zone A, location 33 Mayfield Road, applicant Patricia and Mark Moritka. All right, Charles, do you want to start us with the staff report for that one, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you said, we have a request um, in front of the board for a variance from 3.7. That's the dimensional requirements of the zoning regulations, and it's to allow the rear yard setback of 32.7 feet from the property boundary as against 40 feet minimum required, and this is for the single family residential zone A. So an application was submitted to the building department for the extension of an existing one, uh, 10 feet by 16 feet deck uh, by an additional 16 by six feet. Uh, the zoning review revealed that the existing rear yard setback um, with the current deck is only 38.7 feet which is already 1.3 feet short of the required minimum setback. And um, a check of our records um, did not go any prior variance on record for this property. So the applicant was advised that um, in light of this, uh, they would have to seek a variance to do any kind of extension because as it is, the, there's a non-conformity um, existing. And once they add to that non-conformity, then a variance is Required. So the applicant has now applied to the board for a variance to a lower rear yard setback of 32.7 feet, and that is taking that six feet from that existing 38.7 feet. They would now have 32.7 feet as against 40 feet required for the extension of a six feet to the rear of the deck, as shown on plot plan submitted. So as zoning enforcement officer, I have no concerns regarding uh, this variance application. All right, thank you. And um, Mr. or Mrs. Mariko, would you uh, like to start us off and just give your name and address again for the record? Sure, it's Mark Mariko. It's 33 Mayfield Road. And uh, amazingly, you pronounced my name correctly. So big <laughs> thumbs up there. Nobody usually does. And uh, good uh, evening, I, everyone. I get the same with Gustafson, so yeah. <laughs> So what, uh, what would you like us to know about the application? Uh, basically, um, the house is built in 99. The deck's 21 years old. Um, the railings are starting to rot. Um, we've spent a lot more time out there with the COVID because there's nowhere to go. So we're just hanging out in our backyard. And basically with the table there, if you want to get around the table, you have to move like three chairs. It's pretty tight. So basically right now the deck is 10 by uh, 16 by 10, we'd like to make it 16 by 16. We'd like to go six feet uh, back uh, toward back toward the, the rear of our property. Um, so it won't be, the length won't be any longer. It's just going to go back six more feet and it will just make the deck a lot more usable. Okay. And, um, and this could be for you, Mr. Mirko, or for Charles. Um, what is the, I'm not sure if I'm getting it off of the uh, dagger. How far, we're, we're fine on side yard setback, correct? Right. Right, because it's, it's contained within the structure yes. of the house. Yes. Okay. 
And so in the dimension again, Charles, you gave, we're already non-conforming with the, ex the existing deck by almost two feet? Yes, 1.3 feet to be 1.3, okay. And so we'd be extending that non-conformity another six feet? Yes. Okay, do we have any commissioner questions? No. Uh, Mr. Mariko, if you, oh, go ahead, Kevin. I was gonna ask if any, um, have you talked to either of your neighbors? Yeah, um, the neighbor to our right, um, they're, they have an addition and a deck that goes well beyond ours. They, they just said they have no issue with it. Um, my neighbor to the left is gonna be um, um, selling his house shortly. Um, so he had no objection. He has a, an actual shed that's even beyond where I'm going to be going with the deck. So, um, no, we haven't gotten any, uh, feedback from anybody that's against it at this point. And Thank you. There is a horse farm right in back of us. Um, they have one horse, uh, and that's what we, we border up against that in the back. And we talked with her already and she, she said she had no issues with it. So. All right. Any other commissioners have questions? No. No. Okay. Uh, is there anybody on the line who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Nope. Go ahead, please. And just uh, re-give re us your name and address. Sorry. Castillo 34 Mayfield Road. I live right across the street. Um, they've been there for almost 20 years very clean property. And like he said, everything is rotting and why not extend it 1.3 feet? It'd be six additional feet. Six. Yeah. And they have the horse back there. There's no property. It's a horse farm, a horse racing track. All right, thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak in favor? Is there anybody on the line who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, and Charles, I went a little bit. I, I can say something. Uh, I, uh, we know uh, those neighbors for many, many years and uh, they're very nice and lovely and clean. And, and uh, like if they want to in, increase their deck, it's absolutely no objection, but it's absolutely no obstacles for that. They just want to improve their, um, you know, living conditions, like being more outside, getting more fresh air, which is like absolutely like nice and it's great. So I think this is a good decision that they made. And um, yeah, there are, there are absolutely no obje um, objections from our side. And, and I'm sorry, could you just give your name and address again, just so we clarify yeah, yeah. that? Uh, Natalia Kreisman. Uh, 40 All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, uh, Charles, is there any other feedback on this application we need to uh, address for the record? No, Mr. Chairman, that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, one final pass for commissioners. Any additional questions? Don't see any. Uh, Mr. Mariko, anything else you wanna add? No, uh, just appreciate your uh, time this evening and um, we're hopefully this will be approved and we're looking forward to uh, getting starting on the project. All yeah, right. Great. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, at this point, we will need a motion to close the public hearing. Just a reminder before we do that, um, once we move and vote and approve to close the public hearing. We move to our meeting where the commissioners discuss, but we do not take additional testimony at that point. Um, so do we have a motion? So moved. I second. All right, we have a motion from Sandra seconded by Dan to close the public hearing and move to the public meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes and we will move into our public meeting and the first application 
application number 6234-20, variance from section 3.5.4 livestock to allow chicken coop to be set back four feet from rear property boundary as against 50 feet required. Residential zone A, location 34 Mayfield Road, applicant Jacqueline Castillo. All right, so commissioners, we will begin discussion. Um, a couple of points, I guess, to start us that I noted. Um, the structure itself uh, appears to be fine. So if they had the 50 feet, it could exist there. Um, you know, we heard some certainly compelling and um, um, you know, I think sincere commentary about health concerns, which uh, certainly we don't take lightly and especially um, you know, I'll add just personally with family members with respiratory illness and um, autoimmune challenges, certainly we take those things into consideration. But when we look at the zoning ordinance, um, you know, the, the guidelines are fairly clear in terms of this being something that is allowed within certain parameters. And we do seem to have the necessary side yard clearance as it impacts um, the two properties on the side. So it's really just that issue in the back um, with obviously quite a significant difference between 50 feet and four feet. So I will pause there and see if anybody else has any initial observations. All right, and we did uh, also cover, I think, which is, is an important topic in the, um, I'll say in the health considerations and those are the uh, stipulations around the waste and uh, removal that would require oh I'm sorry Lee looks like you have a hand up sorry you're, you're a little dark there I couldn't uh... I understand that I probably <laughs> like to turn on the light Commissioner Owen really raised the one issue that ought to be of concern and that is what was the intent of the plan of development and the regulation in the first place and if it was to limit the number of chicken coops in residential neighborhoods, then that's what's on the table. Otherwise, the setback, uh, everything else conforms, as far as I can tell, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. So the question is, was the original intention of the regulation to curtain uh, the number of chicken coops in uh, smaller residential lots? Didn't Charles say that Really, that would have been um, the square footage then that would have been the criteria, and they have the square footage. I don't know that if that's the case, then uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I don't I don't know because <laughs> so yeah the no. um, the that section of the requirements and, and this is what Charles alluded to, so a, a lot that is less than eight thousand square feet would not be permitted any livestock, which is what hens are considered in, in the way the mm -hmm. ordinance is written. So we move into the next level, which is 8,000 to 20,000 square feet. That's where this property falls and um, you'd be allowed up to five hens, rabbits, or similar small animals or birds, uh, one sheep or one goat, if anybody was interested in those um, other animal mm -hmm. guidances. Um, so to some degree, I, yeah, I would, and this is interpretation because we obviously you know, were not, uh, at least I was not involved in drafting of this ordinance, but um, seems to be some consideration for lot size and limiting this type of thing on smaller lots, definitely. But then there is a consideration given for um, limited amounts of livestock to be acceptable on properties of larger size, which brings us to the issue here, which is really placement and, and meeting the um, all the setback requirements. So I was just going to say, it does seem like a, a large, you know, request, I mean, going from 50 to 4, but um, on the other hand, I am, I'm sympathetic to the, the fact that there's a hill, and um, it doesn't seem like there would be any place, I mean, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone knows better, but there would be any any other location for the coop in the yard, which she seems to fit the requirements otherwise. 
And if it does conform to the square footage on both the first and second level, then I think that we're probably in good stead in this situation. Can I ask a question? Charles, is, are the hens supposed to be kept in the run and the coop at all times? They're not supposed to be free to run around the yard? That's a good question. Um, my interpretation is that they would be kept in the coop because um, section 3.5.4 C and number five says all livestock shall be confined in keeping areas. And, and so I take that back. Um, they are not necessarily have, they do not necessarily have to be kept in a coop because number five says all livestock shall be confined in keeping areas with adequate fencing located at least 25 feet from any property line. So how if, many feet from any property line? 25 feet from any property line. And then, um, okay. so if, if they had um, fencing, adequate fencing, they could have the chickens um, 25 feet from any property line outside. And I gather that this means outside because one, once you, why, what's the point of having fencing if they're gonna be in a coop? Then, then uh, 6A says that an appropriate shelter, an appropriate permanent shelter must be provided for all livestock and such shelter shall be located at least, and this is where the, the coop comes in now. The, the sh once you provide a shelter, then it must be located um, within 100 feet from the street line, 50 feet from the rear, and 25 feet from the side. Um, so it is saying that um, they're pretty much the, the coop should be should be um, as I as I said, 150 and 25 feet from the property line. So this is not to say that they can't be outside because if you have the appropriate fencing, 25 foot, they could be outside, but with the coop, they have to be that distance from the, these prescribed measurements from the property line. But with this size lot, if they're outside, they're not gonna be 25 feet from the property line. Exactly. So they really need to be in the coop or the run then. Well, I mean, it seems Emma, like they could they they could build a secondary fence, right? That I mean, they do have some room on the sides, at least, um, where they could create sort of a, a little running area for them, where they wouldn't necessarily have to be in the coop. But uh, unless those fences go up, I think they would have to stay and, within. And this is just alluding to the yeah, that's what that, I was thinking. Yeah, if you uh -huh. had a if you had a large property because people have come for um, zoning permits who have like a half an acre, you know, an acre. So that way they can pretty much um, meet these requirements. But with a small size lot like this, it's, it's really mm -hmm. difficult. And um, this is not the first application. I've, I've received applications already that um, they do meet the uh, lot here requirement, but just can't meet the, um, the other setbacks because of the the configuration of the lot. Charles, is there, um, can we put, I, I'm, I'm assuming we can put stipulations on this if, if we were to, to vote uh, in favor? That's the yeah. question. Of course. We, we can. Yeah. You can, with, with any motion, we can, yeah, we can, can put stipulations on them on the motion. Okay. Um, I had a question and it escaped me. Okay. I have a question. Yep. Go ahead, Dan. Going back to number five, I think Kevin was mentioning that there can be a secondary fence. So that fence can come from the coop directly to the house. Basically, mm -hmm. 
and then the chickens can be contained and they would have the adequate side yard requirement. Because I think on one side of the coop, if I remember correctly, it was 29 feet from the side yard. And the other side, I think it was like 26. There you go. Yeah, so, yeah, I think, I think what Rita was talking about as well is, yeah, I mean, so they, they could essentially have a fence come out uh, and, and, you know, kind of literally box in an area. Yep. You know, there's 25 like that. on yep. each side. Um, and, you know, they could have some, some free range in there, but, um, you know, but that's not what they have currently, obviously. Correct. Thanks for pulling that up, Kevin. Yeah, no problem. I that's just think I that the the neighbor who is has the complaints might feel less uh, at risk if the chickens were not completely free range. Feel bad for the chickens, but um, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and Charles, can I ask a procedural question? Because um, it seemed to be something that I, I you had mentioned earlier, but just uh, looking at what we have, we have, if I'm, my memory is serving me correctly, we have four permanent members, and so we'll need to designate the alternate who will vote on this. Is that correct? Yes, you need to designate the, the voters before you take the vote. Okay. I think right now you only have um, three permanent um, members. Um, one, two, three. No, you have four. Yeah, four. You have four members right here. Um, so you would take a vote with the four members and then um, choose one alternate member. Okay, so just won't, um... Charles, who are the four? Who's, who's, aren't there five here? Or... Who are the four permanent members? The four permanent members are Dave Gustafson, uh, Sandra Weilaba, Dan oh. Milovic, and um, Elizabeth Keyes. Oh, I thought, no, oh. Uh, what about <laughs> Kevin? I think that's my question. Um, there seems to be some kind of misunderstanding, Mr. Chairman, because I've left Kevin off of this list here, because my information from the town clerk was that Kevin was not um, a part of the board anymore. And that, because um, when, when, I, when I received the um, notification for uh, Lee Standish, um, it was explained to me that um, he was sitting in for um, Kevin, who was no longer um, part of the board. That, that's was that for Kevin or for Michael? For Kevin. Oh, okay. But, okay. But, well, I can, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just stand out of this one, and you guys... Yeah, it, but it, Kevin it, has it, been... It, it, it would be a good idea to stand out, because, just because of this... Um, mix up here because uh, and i can uh, can i ask you at this point um kevin if you had received any kind of notification that you're no more part of this board um I, I was talking with actually elizabeth i had emails going back and forth um that i, I said i would go on if you guys still wanted it so i didn't imagine i i thought we were good but I think that the notification did, did not, because you are a Democrat appointee, I think that the, and I'm not entirely sure about this, but the Republicans may have exercised their uh, right to appoint a new member. So I don't know what happened okay. between when we talked and, and, and right. what notification but, that Charles All right. So the new member is a, an alternate, right, Lee? Are you, you're an, an alternate? Yes. appointment. Right. Okay. okay. So it sounds like, and, and so Kevin, I wanted to thank you for joining and, and for sticking with us and for participating in the discussion. So you're welcome to please, please stay around. I think it just sounds like we should probably have you abstain from voting 
And so we'll have the other four permanent members and then we'll need one of the alternates to uh, designate that they will be participating in the vote on this application. And then we'll have a, uh, so one of you can vote this one and one of you can vote on the, the second. I don't care. All right. Okay. Well, I, I'll probably jump off because, I mean, okay. I, realistically, I shouldn't be involved in the discussion. I don't think. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right, Kevin. Thanks so much. Thanks, thanks for the right. map, Kevin. Sorry. I'm sorry for the confusion, Kevin. I think we'll, I'm going to try and figure out what's going on because I'm not okay. really sure what I it's all, it's all good. Yeah, just all right. let me know. Let me know if I'm, yeah, if I'm needed. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. Thank all right. Take care. Bye. Okay. Um, so if I'll, why don't, um, so uh, Lee, I think uh, if you don't mind, since it's your first uh, time with us, we'll uh, let you continue participating in the discussion, but I might ask the other two to vote on the two applications for tonight and then we'll get you involved uh, in voting next time. So um, if we don't mind, unless one of you have a preference, Rita, why don't, you have, why don't we have you vote this one and then Sandra, you can vote with us on the second one. I, who are the other alternatives? Uh, just out of curiosity, I, I'm not sure who is. Uh, there are three of alternatives here this evening. Is that the situation? Yes. Oh, boy. Yeah, so uh, we have you. Sandra, we have Sandra. an alternate? Paul is Sandra, not are you an here. alternate? I thought Paul was going to be here, but I, I don't see Paul. He no, Paul's he was not here, here tonight, but hmm. uh, Charles, am I wrong on this? And Sandra, speak up if I got this wrong. Are you an alternate or a permanent member? I'm permanent. You're permanent. I'm sorry. So we do. Okay. I, I, my count is totally off. Okay. Uh, well, no, that's still. So we do have four permanent members. Okay. Right? All right. So Rita and Lee, I do need um, Rita and <laughs> one of you to vote on each one. So who wants to, who wants to be part of the voting on this one? I'll do the second one. That's fine. You'll do the second or one. Or the All first right. one. It doesn't matter to me, Lee. I don't care. All right. You know, I, I don't have strong feelers, but either one of the two. So yeah. either All one right. of the two. All right, so All right, I'll taken... do the second one and Lee can do the first one. Okay. All right. So we have our five voters for this one. We don't have a motion yet, but I just wanted to clarify that while we um, were discussing. So um, do we have uh, any other comment, question, anything we want Charles to clarify um, for us? Charles, you mentioned that you had seen other um, variances for, for chicken coops because people have struggled with getting the precise the map. I'm, I'm looking at you like I'm next to you, but um, you seem to have struck that, that, that there are other individuals who have been in, been similarly situated where they have the acreage, but they can't meet the setback requirements because of the configuration of the lot. Do you, have you seen any of these come through recently or can you give us maybe a little historical perspective on applications like that? Actually, this is my first variance for any um, chicken coop. But um, I've spoken to um, prospective uh, zoning permit applicants in the past, and um, they, and, and the first thing they would have pointed out to me is that, hey, I, I have the required um, 8,000 square feet. But then when we um, look at the site plan and uh, kind of move it around, we realize that um, they would not be in a position to, to achieve all the required setbacks. And I, and then my response to them was that um, if you want to go ahead with the zoning permit, you'd have to first get the blessing of the zoning board of appeals. And then they said, oh, like, okay, I bought it. So they didn't do it then? They didn't ask they, for They didn't do it. So it's not like we, we have had appearance during my tenure, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, it, you know, as we, we think through this one, we, we essentially have a, um, um, there's a, obviously a difference of opinion between neighbors, um, which is um, something we try to take into account in, in our decisions, uh, because we are essentially um, as, as a former member uh, said when I first joined the board years ago, essentially what we're here to do is give people permission to break the law. Um, and uh, that's essentially what we vote on with these applications. And when we do that, we'd like to do it in a way that, um, you know, fits with um, um, 
well, in an ideal scenario, everybody is uh, is comfortable with that, and we certainly don't have that ideal scenario here. But um, I think that it opens up an opportunity for us to consider some you know, stipulations that could be attached. And I think you know one in particular was raised around the uh, health department and the inspection of the um, the waste and and removal. Um, and I, you know, think. Um, Outside of that, um, we, we've got the, where we have the objection, um, the way the regulations are written, we've got adequate setback in, from that side, uh, from either side. So it's really just about the, the back. And, and so we don't have anybody here to represent, but you know, that also, while that we can't take that as a de facto support, um, it's obviously not an objection either. Charles, you're looking to weigh in? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, please bear with me one minute. Um, and um, my, my duty here is to provide the board with all the necessary information as it relates to the regulations and to um, the results of any inspection that I carry out. Um, based on my inspection and um, with the, and let me just um, share the screen with you. Um, okay. Uh, all right, so. Coming up, coming up, coming up. No. Location, this is it. Okay, so coming up on your screen is um, what we have here is the assessor's um, website, web page, and uh, based on a one inch to 45 feet scale of this uh, plan here, uh, what we have is um, the subject property, and I, I, I deliberately Put it upside down so as to give you a feel, a feel. I'm sorry, for um, your your perspective. Looking at it from Mayfield Road, this is Mayfield Road here. So this is the you're facing the property head on. This is the residential building on the property, and this is the cook here in the rear. So um, from the cook to number twenty one. And uh, Ms. Castillo can tell me what the name of that street is behind you. So from, from the coop to number 21, the nearest point is 75 feet. And from the coop to number 25 is 80 feet. So the closest um, building, residential building to the coop in the rear is 75 feet. We have two, 75 and 80. All the others are some distance apart. I just wanted to share that with the board. Okay, thank you, Charles. And from the other uh, diagram we had, the distance from the structure to the property line that is shared with 40 Mayfield is, that's the 39 feet. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then on the opposite side, it's 29. Thank you. Both of which are in compliance with the 25 feet setback. 25 feet setback. Okay. All right. Um, do we have any other questions uh, or do we have anybody who would like to uh, make a motion on this application? Uh, I'm I'm not going to be voting on it, but I think when I'd like to see 
some things in the um, motion. One would be about the waste, um, a lock, and that the chickens are confined in some way to the, the coop and the run or some additional fenced in area within that yard. All right, thank you, Rita. Lee, are you on mute? I see you talking. I think you're on mute, Lee. There we go. I have not done this too often with this application, so excuse me, please. My first uh, time out. And uh, I would simply uh, make uh, either second that a motion, if in fact that was a motion, but if she's not voting, then perhaps I would make that a motion that we approve this application with the three stipulations that were raised by the with this commission who spoke. I second that. So wait, just to clarify, do we have to put in a stipulation if something, for example, like the waste containment is already required by the zoning regulations, do we really need to put that in a stipulation? Uh, just perhaps not, open. if that is in the regulation. So you, you can. You know, you can. All right, so Lee, just for clarity, could I have you, uh, would you be able to restate the three stipulations? Uh, let me try to remember what they were exactly. Okay. Firstly, that, uh, that a lock be raised to the point where the grandchildren would not be able to access it. Uh, secondly, that if the chickens should run free, they would be confined by additional fencing uh, if they were outside of the coop or the run area. And uh, I think that those are the two, if I remember correctly, but perhaps it was, was there a third? The health department too. The waste. Oh. Oh, yes. they, right. they, but that is in the regulation so that the stipulation regarding the waste be conformed to. Okay, so we have a, a motion. I'm going to take a stab at restating just for clarity. So the motion is to approve the application with three stipulations. One, that the health department inspects and approves as is outlined in the zoning regulations, uh, the manure um, storage and removal. Second would be that um, the, the locks are addressed satisfactorily to avoid um, inadvertent escape of the hens. And then the third um, was allowing for additional fence that would extend beyond the coop for the chickens to be in the yard. And that, but that fencing would have to keep them 25 feet from in the property line. From the property line. If we can add some specifics, that just like Rita said, within 25 feet. Yes, I would include that in the motion certainly. And also with the lock, I would be a little bit more specific on how high it should be. Five feet, four feet, maybe at least five feet from the ground. Okay. Um, 
can just really don't fly very well. I think four feet is probably <laughs> adequate. Point five feet, sure. All right. Um, so sounds like we may want to amend with some more specific um, stipulations. So um, Lee, would you want to consider potentially withdrawing the original motion and we can take a stab at a revised motion? Yes, that would be fine. I would be happy to withdraw that motion and then I would uh, defer to you to make a new motion uh, in the language that uh, we <laughs> would desire. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure that uh, I am the expert on this, but I will take a stab at it. All right, so I'm going to um, make an amended motion that um, we approve the variance um, as submitted with three stipulations one being that all health department regulations inspections and approvals as outlined in the zoning regulations be uh, met and um, signed off on by the director of health the second would be that all locks be set to a minimum of um, five feet high to prevent inadvertent escape. And then I would like to clarify on the additional fencing that any additional fencing constructed for the hens not extend more than four feet from the existing structure toward either side yard. I second. All right, we have a second from Lee. Charles, do you need me to restate any of that? Or Julie, do you need me to yes, restate any of that? I'm struggling with number three. Could you repeat that for me, please? Yeah, any, uh, so my clarification was number three. Was it any additional fencing that is erected for the hens to be in the yard outside of the existing coop and runner structure? That that fencing cannot extend more than four feet from that structure in toward either side yard. I would second that. I think it actually was uh, Dan who um, said Can you just please say something? Uh, I'm sorry, at this point we we cannot take additional testimony. I'm sorry. Okay. So you're saying Mr. Chairman that the end of fencing shall not extend. No, I'm saying we have the dimensions of the existing structure to clarify and we've got 39 feet on one side, we've got 29 on the other. I'm saying that any additional fencing that's erected should not cut more than four feet into either of those two distances. Oh, okay. So the fence so we would be, if they did that, we would be allowing for fence at the 25 foot line on the one side, but at 35 feet on the other side. So because one side have, one side has, uh, one side has 29 feet. Right. Right. So we could go four feet there and still be at the 25. And I'm saying we're going to, let's extend, I want to, my motion was to have that same four foot stipulation on the other side. So we would be limiting that fencing to being 35 feet from the side. Four feet from the cool, right? Right, from the, from the cool. Yeah, four feet into the 39 feet that I see currently as the setback. Right, so the fence will be four feet from the coop, making it um, 25 feet from the property line, all right? Yeah, I'm talking, about, I, I'm talking about extending that same four feet restriction to the other side as well. And from the other side, so, so from the other side, it would be 35, Correct. Right? Okay, Correct. okay, I got you. <clears throat> so 
and then um, it will come across um, somewhere up here. It, it will be more than 25 feet from the front anyway. So, okay. So um, what about the rear yard though, Mr. Chairman? Wouldn't you want it to be 25 feet from the rear yard as well? From the rear property line, I mean? Well, the existing structure, um, I wasn't thinking so because the, exist okay. the existing structure is already four feet. Okay, so it would be built in. Okay, point taken. Yeah. Okay, I got you. All right, so we had that motion. I believe we had Lee second, uh, and we decided, and I Dan. Think Dan seconded it, uh, but. Uh, oh, Dan seconded, I'm sorry. Okay, okay and we have our um, five voters. Rita, you're sitting this one out. Okay. All in favor of the motion on the variance? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, the variance is granted as stipulated. And uh, Charles, you will follow up with the applicant for more details, right? Yes. Okay. All right, and uh, moving to our second application, number 6235-20, variance from section 3.7, dimensional requirements to allow rear yard setback of 32.7 feet as against 40 feet minimum required to facilitate the extension of existing deck as shown on plot plan, residential zone A, location 33 Mayfield Road, applicant Patricia and Mark Moretko. Uh, do we have any discussion among the commissioners on this one? Do we have anybody who would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve it. All right, we have a motion to approve as submitted. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we'll move to our vote. So Lee, you'll sit this one out. Rita, you're in. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, the variance is granted. And again, uh, Charles will follow up with the applicant with more details. Um, I hesitate to do this again, folks, but we, we have had a series of marathon meetings and uh, we're already past nine o'clock. I uh, would like to move that we table the, um, the officer election until next meeting, if we could. Uh, so I'll make a motion that we uh, table selection of officers until the August meeting. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, uh, and I think our other item of business was minutes from the June meeting. Do we have a quorum left with us? I don't have that attendee uh, list. Do we, have, do we have at least four of us who were here for June? I think, I think we do. Yeah, we do. I was here, Rita was here. Dan, you were- Dan was here. Meeting, right? Dan was always here. And Elizabeth, were you here? No. But I think I for a quorum, though, don't I? If I abstain, I'm still considered for purpose oh. of the quorum. I think that's right. Sounds great. <laughs> All right. Well, get it over we'll, with, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring, all right. So, um, do we have a, a motion on the June minutes? Um, do are we doing corrections before we make a motion, or? Yeah. If you have, if, let's let's bring those up. Um. In the um. Not in the in the hearing part discussion, but later on we were chatting um, somewhere there. It says that I said that um, that there should be better communication about fences, and I just wanted to clarify better communication on the town web page as to the zoning regulations. I think it came across as if I thought Charles wasn't talking to them on the phone or something. I don't know if you can find that, Julie, or not. I'm sorry, I don't even have my minutes. I, yeah, I didn't. I left them upstairs. Oh. I don't have them in front of me, but I could find it and correct. Okay. It. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. With that, uh, were there any other any other corrections or anything anybody saw? All right. So, Rita, do you want to make a motion with that uh, correction included? Sure. I make a motion that we accept the minutes as amended uh, about my comments. Anybody want a second? Oh, no seconds. 
Well, I'll second it. I, I think I can do that. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Okay. Minutes are approved. I have to abstain. I wasn't there. Oh, I'm sorry. And we have one, one abstain. So um, we had... Uh, <laughs> three yeses and three abstains. <laughs> yeah, we have three. So does that still qualify? No, that doesn't qualify as for passing a variance. So that qualifies on the minutes, Charles, if we only have three uh, affirmatives? Yes, I would think so. Yes, this is not, okay. that's not for the variant. So. I learned something so, every month here. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> all right, so officially it's uh, 302, I believe, on that count. Uh, so minutes are approved. Um, what am I forgetting? Charles, uh, do we have any other business we have to cover? I think, Mr. Chairman, that's pretty much it for tonight. Um, public. Are there any public comments on any general matters of the Zoning Board of Appeals? There is, um, on the list of appointees, Kevin's name isn't there anymore and it says there's a vacancy if you go on to the appoint, appointees page. So if there's a vacancy, I don't know, just seemed like it was awful for him to sit there today. <laughs> <laughs> Which appointees page are you referring to? On the, if you go to the town website. Okay, okay. Yeah, and where it says boards and commissions. Yeah. And it says list of appointees. Uh-huh. So there's a vacancy under the permanent members. And okay. there's three alternatives and Kevin's name isn't there at all. Right, because my, my understanding from the town clerk's office was mm -hmm. that Kevin's tenure was not um reinstated okay but there's a vacancy that's that's all so, so so then that vacancy was filled so to speak by lee standage so but lee's a, lee's listed as an alternate or an alternative oh okay okay i see where you, i see where you're coming from okay. yeah um confusion yeah, that's what she told me but anyway um yeah so i just figured you might want to follow up on yeah so what, what I, the story I, is a permanent should be filled by a permanent okay and then um, I later learned that Mr. Um, that Mike Vera had been appointed to the Planning and Zoning Commission, so he's no longer with the Board of Appeals. Um, oh. Yeah, if we've got a vacancy listed out there and there's not really one, we better get that correct. There's going to be all sorts of people uh, calling you up, Charles, trying to get uh, in on these meetings. So. Oh yeah, like we want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know they went this long. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will, I, I will um, start things out with the office of the town clerk um, tomorrow or sometime this week. Okay. okay. So sure nice to see you um, all. Yeah, so far we, haven't, we, we don't have an um, application for August. So August might be your lucky month. <laughs> ah, okay. So um, far, I said no, I said so far so far it would be interesting should we yeah i mean i think the deadline is around about the 6th of august okay seems to be a fairly amelial group and then um, i'm looking forward to working with you all yeah welcome lee thanks Me for too. uh hanging in with us and then yeah thanks everybody we've had a uh the, the virtual meetings have been some of the longest of my tenure on this board so uh thank you for that and doing it without being there in person uh so unless there's anything else, we will adjourn tonight's meeting. Okay, bye all. All right, have a good bye. night. Take care.